Welcome back to the Space Invaders course. So far in the course, we've been looking at a range of basic programming techniques, such as storing information in variables, making decisions based on those variables, and then using the keyboard to control some text animating around the screen. In this lesson, we're going to make a real start on the actual game that we're programming, so Space Invaders. And we're going to look at creating a player ship, putting it at the bottom of the screen, and then allowing the player to move that left and right using the command keys. If we look at the finished game, we'll see that the player ship and the aliens themselves are made from little graphic images. Uh, these are called sprites. So the first thing we're going to need to do is learn how to create sprites in our Tick80 software. To build this player ship, we first need to create our sprite. If you look at the top of the screen, you'll see there's a number of buttons. And the second one along is our sprite editor, which you can also get to by pressing the F2 key. So let's go into our sprite editor. And you'll see that we have a drawing area here and then a preview of our sprites. The sprites that are currently in there are the ones from the demo program. So what we can do is simply click on one and delete it. And you'll see that they're actually made up of a number of individual sprites. So let's just go along here, clicking on them and deleting them. Our sprite editor screen then is really split into two parts. The right hand side is a preview of all the sprites we have in our system. And you can see that we can move around and there's various boxes here. But if you note over here on our actual drawing area, there's a number of piers at the top of that. And as we move around, you'll see that each of the boxes on this right hand side has got an ID number. So that's the sprite number for this particular sprite. So we're going to put our player ship into sprite number zero, which is this top left hand corner one. In the editor area, then you'll see that this is our drawing box. And if I pick up a colour, you'll see that we can put in various dots on here. And each of these dots represents a pixel on our screen. So remember, whenever we were animating our text, we said the screen was 240 pixels wide and 136 pixels tall. Each of our sprites then is 8 pixels wide by 8 pixels tall. So let's draw our player ship. To use the sprite editor, there's a number of controls we have along here. Um, this one over here is the erase one, so this actually clears the entire sprite back to nothing. So let's draw one in. To do that, we simply select a colour, so I'm going to use this green, and then you simply drag over the place you want to draw it. So a classic Space Invaders spaceship is a rectangle along the bottom with a little gun pointing up there. But you can really draw whatever you want. Uh, what is important to do though is to have somewhere where the player's bullets are going to come out of and that should be somewhere along the middle of the top of the spaceship. So let's use this one. So we can see there we have sprite number zero and there it is how it will display on our screen. So let's go back to our code editor, which is this little um, icon at the top here. And we'll start getting this on the screen and animating it. Let's start by seeing how we actually put a sprite on the screen. So in our tick function, we're going to add some code. So usually the very first thing we do is to clear the screen so that we don't have anything getting in the way from our previous, our previous work. The command that puts sprites on the screen is the spr command. And again, this is a function which hides away a lot of extra code. So that function takes a number of values. And the, these values which we put into functions are called parameters. So the first parameter is the sprite number. And we know that we've drawn our player ship in sprite number zero. We then have an x and y coordinates 
So let's put it somewhere in the middle of the screen and we'll just use that just to see how it works. So if we press escape and run that, we should find we now have our player sprite sitting in the middle of the screen. So let's come back to our code and let's start looking at how we can then get that animating properly along the bottom of the screen. Now we know that these two numbers are going to have to be under our player control. And we know that we usually we will set those using variables. So let's go up to the top of our code here. <clears throat> Give ourselves a few blank lines. And let's create our variables. So these variables are going to control the player ship X and Y positions. So let's give our variables names that describe what they mean. So we have here our player ship X variable. If you look at the way I'm naming the variables, I'm using what's known as camel case. There's lots of different ways you can write variable names, but I tend to use this camel case one where we start with a lowercase letter and then we separate each word by using a capital letter. So we can read it here. So we can read player ship X. When you're naming them, it's very important to make sure that they mean something so you can recognize um, what the variable does in your program. And you need to use either letters, numbers, or the underscore character. Some, some people name their variables using underscores. So player ship X, something like that. There, there, there's no right or wrong way, um, but whatever you do, try, try and be consistent. So, so use the same type of naming all the way through your program. So I'm going to use this camel case, so player ship X. So we know that the X position of the ship is going to control the left and right. So we're going to start it off with somewhere in the center. So we know that it's 240 pixels wide. So we'll set it about 120. We're also going to need a player ship Y position. And the ship's going to be at the bottom of the screen. So we know that the bottom pixel is 136. And as we've just seen, these sprites are eight pixels tall. So 136, take away our eight pixels, gives us 128 as the place where we're going to put our sprite. Um, all, all sprites, when we use this function, that function tells us which pixel position the top left corner of the sprite is going to be at. So when our program is running, we need to use our player ship X and Y variables to control this position. So let's copy this down. So if I highlight the text and then use control C on my keyboard, that will copy that text and I can then paste it in on top of here using control and V. You can also use the control the um, shortcuts up here as well. So you've got your copy and your paste controls up here as well. So again, I can highlight my player ship Y, control C, and I'll stick it down here with control V. So that should make our player ship appear at the bottom in the middle. So let's just check that to make sure it's all okay. And there we go. So back into our code. Now, we know that we're going to use the cursor keys to use to control the left and right motion of this. So again, really copying what we did in our previous um, lesson three, <clears throat> we know that if button two is being pressed, this is our left button, then we want to make player ship x equal to player ship x minus one. We want to end that if statement. And then we can actually, a quicker way of doing that is to copy this and paste it there. And we know that if button three is being pressed, then player ship x is going to be equal to player ship x 
plus one. So that should allow us to move left and right. We also know then that we need to limit this value so it doesn't go off the edge of the screen. So if player ship x, so if it's less than zero, so it's gone off the left hand edge of the screen, then we want to make player ship x equal to zero and end that. And then again, if we copy and paste this, so we've got to do our left hand edge detection. So if player ship x is greater than, so again it's 240 pixels minus our 8 pixels width of our ship gives us our 232. Then our player ship x will be equal to 232. So that should allow us to use our buttons to move left and right, check that we don't go off the edge of the screen, and then display our sprite, so sprite number zero, at the player ship x and y position. So let's see if that all works then. So let's run that, and if I use my left and right keys, I can go all the way to the edge and it stops, and then going back this way, I can go all the way to the edge and it stops. So coming back into our code then. So we've now got a working player ship that the person can control with the left and right arrow buttons. So let's make sure we save our work. So again, press escape and save lesson four. And then back into our code again. That's gonna finish us off for this lesson four. In our next lesson, we're going to have a look at the way in which we're using our variables and the numbers in our software. And we're going to have a look at how we can tidy that up and make it a bit better structured. So I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Don't forget to visit the course pages for this project. There you'll be able to download the code for this lesson and get lots of extra hints and tips. You'll also get access to all my other programming, electronics and gaming projects. All the links are in the description below. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.